Welcome to the Lens at 177 and today we have uh, another discussion uh, which is related to the 145th uh, Gerimit anniversary that is being celebrated this weekend and sitting down with me today is the Minister for Multi-Ethnic Affairs and uh, Minister for Sugar, Charajit Singh. Uh, Mr. Singh, welcome to the program and uh, specifically we are talking about the Gerimit celebrations which is under your ministry. Uh, first of all, uh, 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 for those who may not be familiar, uh, in your own words as a current uh, indenture, uh, a descendant of Girmit, what does Girmit mean to you? Uh, thank you very much, Anish. Uh, thanks for the invitation to this uh, station. I actually would like to say that uh, Girmit has a lot to do with uh, me in particular as well because uh, my maternal uh, grandfather was a Girmit himself. Uh, and uh, so I'm a fourth generation from his side. And of course, the second generation from my father's side is a paternal. Uh, grandson. But the history says a lot about Gurmits um, because Gurmit, uh, as we say in, uh, in, in our language, but the word, actual word is agreement. Agreement was a word that uh, was translated or then made into a short form of word saying Gurmit. Now Gurmit uh, carries a lot of, uh, lot of history in this country. Not only in this country, but if, if, if you see when British colony had uh, uh, sent a lot of uh, workers out of uh, India into Trinidad, into British Guyana, into Mauritius, and of course Fiji as well. So this became a very big history in this making. And uh, as you know that we, uh, when the British colony only realized that the, the, the only workers they could put on the sugarcane farm was Indians and they could have their way uh, to make them work. Otherwise, you know, they, if they would have brought people from other parts of the world, they wouldn't have succeeded in the industry that they, were, that they had established. And uh, uh, the sugarcane industry was uh, established by sugarcane refineries, so CSR. And uh, they identified that where and how we can bring in people, mm -hmm. and they will work just like a bullock. You don't have to uh, tell them what to do. You know, so long as you have got a wee with the back, mm -hmm. and they'll work. So, industry from the 60,000 initial that had landed in Fiji, the indentured laborers, uh, of course, some survived, some died on the way when they came from India. But overall, there was uh, enough number that uh, were on the farms distributed throughout Fiji, on the, the western side. And the, initially, if you, if you realize that the first mill was uh, uh, built in Asori, uh, and that's where they, they started the sugar industry. But they realized that uh, sugar was not successful in the, uh, in the southern part of Viti Levu because of the weather pattern. So then they moved out to the west and of course to the north. So coming back to the industrial system and industrial laborers, I think uh, there is a lot to talk about. Um, probably this, this uh, association will not <laughs> complete by uh, everything that I want to talk about. But in a short form, yes, uh, there is uh, a, something that we need to remember, understand, let our future generations know as well that where indentured laborers had come from, the Girmitis had come from, what they have done for the country, and what the, their children who have actually succeeded through their parents. Not forgetting, a lot of people are complaining to say that indentured laborers have come, they suffered. Yes, they have suffered. But at the same time, they also had also prospered. When they prospered, they also made sure that the children got educated. And when they got educated, and today we see our diaspora is in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, America, and all parts of the world. So we cannot totally blame to say, okay, uh, we have uh, suffered. Uh, 
Yes, we have suffered, but at the same time, it made a reason for us to stay in this country and educate ourselves, educate our children, so that they can go up to our next level and, and make their life better. You are an example of a successful uh, businessman in Fiji. Uh, you have uh, businesses all over the country. Do you sometimes think uh, how your success is tied to the Girmit era and your descendants who came to Fiji? What did they teach you that has today made you what you are today? Well, the simple uh, uh, education that we were given by our, our parents was to work hard. You, 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 cannot, you cannot succeed in life without working hard. You cannot keep complaining that, oh, I have got nothing, I can't do anything. Um, yes, um, we know that not everybody has got the equal opportunity um, in terms of finance and otherwise, but you have to be honest within yourself that, that look, I, I, I've been given a time, I've given an opportunity, I've got a land, I need to do things. So from my point of view, uh, look, as I said, I'm a second generation from my, my, my paternal father's side. And uh, I have always been saying that, look, you know, if you have a determination in life, if you have determined yourself that I want to do something in life, and this is something when my, my, my former principal, Mr. Amrit and I used to say in our school days, that if you are determined in life, you win 50% of the battle. The other 50% is just to work hard to get it into it. So I think that's the lesson I want to give to people in life, whether now or even in the next generation or future, that if you are determined, you can succeed. But if you want to expect that you'll be given a handout and then you'll be get, getting government to come and give you every day, every spoon feeding, mm -hmm. it won't work. So my success is all about determination. It's all about saying, okay, yes, this could be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course I had my, as I said, my maternal side, my grand fourth generation, my nana, as we say. Uh, he was on the cane farm, he was, uh, he went to the Grimmin system, but nevertheless, I think most of the people uh, who are, have gone through the Grimmin system have actually, actually enjoyed after the Grimmit finished, the era finished, because when the era finished of Grimmit, after five years, they were given a chance. Either you go back to India, or you can go back and start your own farming. Mm. So I think a lot of people opted to stay back and, and continue, and this is where the prosperity of the sugar industry uh, came up. We know history tells us that uh, Grimiti has uh, brought uh, the culture and tradition with them. Uh, you being a Sikh, uh, uh, how has it helped you to realize your tradition, your culture uh, related to Sikh, if that Sikhism wasn't brought to uh, uh, Fiji by the descendants? Uh, well, um, I think uh, or, or, uh, in, in particular about Sikh, well, Sikhism, and, uh, our Sikh culture was uh, not c had come during the indenture system. Uh, most of our Punjabis uh, and Sikhs came after the indenture had finished. But however, uh, prior to uh, uh, the idea is that when the indentured labor systems were here, I think uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, support uh, by, by, by the elders who were here around with the indigenous laborers um, that, that supported them to maintain their culture. Uh, and um, so, so that continued and uh, that helped, that helped the indentured laborers and their families too according to the culture. But what I'm saying, coming back to our Sikhism, yes, uh, we were, I think, my, our Sikh f family that had come with, that came soon after the indigenous laborers had, had finished in this country. But having said your question to be answered, I think uh, it was very relevant and the state at the time did not uh, hold back to anybody to say that you cannot um, preach or, or, or do or have your own way. 
of, of your culture to be advanced. So that was something that was, I think, that made sure that our Indians and our others that had come, they maintained the culture and the religion, and that, that still continues till today. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, today's young gener generation appre appre uh, appreciate what Gurmit is and what it has done to the country? Well, to be honest, I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> A um, lot of our people, our young kids are basically they are in the very modern age. For them, uh, there is to, to some of them is relevant. To majority is not relevant because everybody is now, as I said, wants to move out and do their own thing. And and there has been, especially when these kids have uh, or the children have moved out to uh, the, the the other parts of the world. For them, yes, one, in the once in a while they have the Ramayana Mandali going and, and the religious function going. But it's, it's more like a, it's not like an intact of religion. It's more like a social thing now for them, for, to, to do the, for them to go to Ramayana Mandali. And it's, I'll, 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 be, I'll be very honest, they will be spending more time uh, drinking uh, kava than to actually sit down and listen to the Ramayana. So what I'm saying is this, uh, my own experience where I've gone in, locally in Fiji and in overseas, if you invite them to come to a function, uh, say the function starts at 7, they'll turn it up 8. Why? Because that's the time when the kava is mixed. So for a lot of people, religion and the, this, these teachings are most like relevant and irrelevant both. And I'll, I'll tell you what, um, that's the biggest worry uh, in, in, in for me as a multi ethnic minister, that if, we are, if our uh, priority is not on the religion and the culture, but more on, on, on the entertainment side, then we may be very sorry to lose our, our young kids coming out to these functions and, and in Ramayanas and, and all these uh, religious functions that we have. And, and what can be done to change this mindset? Well, I'll tell you what, everything starts from home. The parents have to be first cultured. And uh, they, should be, they should know what their, their responsibility is. And then uh, the responsibility should be then passed on to the children to say that you maintain uh, this religion and your language and your culture. Uh, because I'll tell you one thing again, in most of the foreign countries that I've been to, um, our children even don't even can speak Hindi. They 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 are all speaking English and the languages that that they they're happy with. So the idea is this: that the parents is the root of to maintain the culture. So the parents' responsibility is very importantly to say, look, look let's let's keep this this way. Mr. Singh, thank you very much. We'll take a short break and continue the discussion on the other. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Thank you very much and uh, let's continue the discussion with uh, Mr. Charanjit Singh, uh, Minister for Multi-Ethnic Affairs and Suga. Uh, Minister Singh, uh, let's talk about the history of Girmit. Uh, we know it's associated with uh, trauma and uh, suffering. So my question to you is uh, uh, today's uh, current generation of Indians, do they do you think, do they still, do they believe or do they understand what their descendants went through in Fiji? Well, uh, at least to, to some extent, yes. I think uh, by majority, our, our generations understand where, they, where they've come from, where their ancestors had come from. And 145 years ago, when uh, the, in, the, the first Guinea people were brought in, and uh, of course, absolutely, there were other boats that had brought in a number of uh, indigenous laborers. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, as I said again earlier, that uh, 
it's a matter of educating uh, once they understand uh, what has, has happened in the 145 years back. But there is uh, always a, a, a position for people to, if they're interested, you cannot go and uh, force them to understand. But they have to be told through some of their generations, their parents, their friends, their families that what in nature labor is, was all about, what game is all about, and what the sufferings they went through, what was the end results of uh, eventually after the game has finished. So uh, I would I would say that to look uh, uh, as as much as people may want to know. We are not telling them what what is all about, and my suggestion would be that we should actually have a, a particular curriculum in the education system uh, to show where the history was and what history is. And I, in particular, I was uh, very f impressed with uh, the Mauritian government. Uh, I was in Mauritius, and uh, I happened to meet the Prime Minister of Mauritius. And uh, he was telling me that uh, uh, they had declared uh, a public holiday in Mauritius for Girmi Day, well, uh, almost 15, 20 years ago, just to recognize what Girmi was all about. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they have also established a museum uh, in, in, the, in the heart of the city uh, near the wharf where the, the jetties. And uh, that is called Girmit uh, uh, Parvasi Ghat. Parvasi Ghat means that this Parvasi is uh, the Girmits and the Ghat is a wolf. So they've actually put a museum there on the, uh, on the edge of the wolf with the footstep of the first person, the first person who landed his feet as a Girmit. So that resembles the starting of the Girmit in Mauritius. Mm. So those type of histories that they've created there. And, and then, of course, it's a museum. You know, every person that lands in, into Mauritius, uh, in, in tourism or otherwise, they make a time to go and visit uh, that uh, particular uh, museum to, to see the history of what had happened uh, in Mauritius then. And we are not different to that. Mm. So my plan uh, in the next year and so is this, that uh, we have almost 13 acres of land behind our government center, which uh, is still not developed. So we are trying to put a, there's a proposal by the Indian government. As you know, the Indian government had given the initial funding for the government center. So currently our Deputy Prime Minister, um, Honorable Pivan Prasad, uh, went to India and, and um, uh, Chief Minister Yogi has given some assurance that uh, their uh, state government will support us to set up a museum um, in the, but the part, the balanced part of the Grimmie Centre, which will be something similar to what uh, Mauritius government has done. Uh, so, so there is something for everybody to permanently come and see where the Girmits, the era of Girmit was and how it was all revolved and how it all finally mm -hmm. finished off. And of course on the same, same part of land, uh, we'd like to also put a, a, a replica of the Ram Mandir, mm -hmm. uh, which in Ohio they have done. Mm -hmm. So that will be put side by side. It will become a good tourist attraction uh, for the people of Latoka and of course people of who the, our, our tourists that comes. So coming back to the, the story, yes, yes, we have to keep reminding mm. our generation. And, the, and that will only be done when we have some permanent structures and things in place. We, you know, and of course, you know, by just a lot of people you can write uh, literatures. Mm. They may not be interested, but a lot of people are interested to see the actual something which is tangible, which is we can hold to, which you know we can relate to. Mm. Sorry, this project in Rotoka. Uh, uh, when do you intend uh, groundwork with Blade, and what's the costing looking like? Uh, 
as I have said that Honorable uh, Prasad has already spoken to Chief Minister Yogi, they are very keen to come and uh, finance and do it. And now, after the celebration finishes, and of course, uh, um, I, I hope to then uh, uh, basically start talking to the uh, Chief Minister himself and see how fast they can do. But as I said, the funding and the financing, uh, they are prepared to do. So that will be at no cost to Fiji government. And, um, and they are more than happy to, to do this museum plus the mandir. Will this be done in this term of government? Uh, I hope we can start it uh, and, um, and finish it before our term anyway. Mm. Let's hope. Let's address the elephant in the room being the British uh, who were behind the Grimit, uh, bringing the Grimitis to this show. Uh, other countries like Suriname, uh, um, Mauritius, you mentioned, politi politicians there have called for the British to apologize for what they did to Grimitius. What's your view on this issue? I don't uh, have any strong views to, for them to say yes or no to it. Because, look, there's two sides of the coin. Uh, first, of course, they were tricked, our agreement is a trick to come to Fiji. They worked here, they prospered. Some didn't like, they went back. But uh, by majority, most of them stayed back. So, look, you know, you, you, you cannot, uh, yes, we know that how they were brought was a matter of, uh, uh, like they were not given the true and honest views of where they were going. But uh, let's let's look at the benefits of it too. You know, overall, let you know how did the country benefit? How did they benefit? So British, the only thing I regret is that uh, we were not uh, given the British passport, which we were supposed to carry. If, if our people would have been given the opportunity to continue with the British passport, that would have been an, 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 a plus for us. And are you addressing this issue with anybody currently or not? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the powers to talk to anybody about it, but you know, certainly I can. If, if I meet uh, King Charles one day, I'll tell him. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Singh. We'll take a short break and uh, continue that discussion on the other side. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back, and today we are talking to Minister for Multi-Ethnic Affairs and Sugar, Charanjit Singh. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, we are talking about uh, Girmit, uh, the Girmit celebrations this weekend. Let me tie uh, Girmit to race, race, race relations currently in Fiji. Uh, do you think we are better off currently uh, with race relations? Uh, how do you see race relations in the country at this point in time? Uh, well, firstly, I must thank the coalition government uh, for uh, declaring a, a specific day uh, to be a public holiday for Gilmit celebration and Gilmit commemoration. That's the starting point of, of the race relation that we like to achieve amongst the Ethiopians and the Indo-Fijians and of course other minority communities. So I couldn't see, I couldn't see th anything better uh, in the last 16 years of the previous government as much as they were saying that they, we had equal citizenry, we had equal rights, we had everything in place, but there was nothing forthcoming by the previous government to say, look, okay, let's do something for the community that had done so much for this country. So first thing first, I must thank the Honorable Prime Minister and his and the entire government to recognize this particular specific day for us and uh, for the community that had done so much economically to progress this nation. However, with this uh, Girmi Day as a celebration, I think it will, you know, this is the second year that we're celebrating, the first year we had in Suva, 
there was a massive uh, celebration and massive crowd if you must if you had realized that the whole of the Albert Park was full of people uh, and these amount of activities that went around and uh, so it's you have to start from somewhere so the firstly the government has uh, approved a, a public holiday then we have celebrations and then we have uh, recognitions of the descendants of the Girmitiers who are still surviving. Um, as you know that last year the celebration was done directly by the Ministry of Finance. This year it's done through my ministry and I'm a multi-ethnic so I have a more, more of a control now as to what's to be done now and in the future. One of the things is said I, we agree to that we should move the Girmit celebration to the west more for a reason that if you see most of the Girmitiers after the Nasori mill had closed then they had moved to the west right from Reiki Reiki all the way to Sikatoka mm -hmm. and uh, this is where the Girmitiers themselves were staying and for their children and, that, and then of course the grandchildren and so forth so that gives us a reason now that we should take our stage to the people rather than the, they come to the stage. And uh, as yesterday I had discussion in another session, but they said, why only in one place? I said, look, uh, uh, we have to actually do one more big one in the West, and then eventually from next year we will be doing uh, celebrations throughout the country in all the small towns as well, rather than getting and one of the reasons why I want to do the Gilmit Center is that, that is the actual reward, Gilmit, Gilmit Center. So let's have it there. Uh, we will we'll provide buses and uh, transports for everybody to come and, 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 and be part of the place. But uh, yes, uh, coming back to the main question of yours is we are trying to do everything possible that we are bringing the two major races and the smaller communities together through a, a function, through an, a celebration, through a commemoration, the whereby we can, that brings us together. It's just like, you know, when you have a Diwali, the, the indigenous uh, Ethiopia is coming and say, Mithai. So, so they said, oh, as soon as they, uh, Diwali comes, Mithai. So we like to start saying that Gilmit comes, again, another, another Mithai another celebration that let's get together, let's put our hearts together and, 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 and be one in this country. Do, do, do you still see people or politicians in the country who are working against racial, uh, <coughs> bringing the two races together, who are still trying to spread menace in the society and does it sadden you? Well, uh, in the government, Cabinet, uh, I don't see anyone that has uh, opposed in, in, in particular when, when my proposal of this budget was uh, submitted. Within a second, within a second, we, 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 we submitted a budget of 250,000 for the celebration and this commemoration of this uh, Gilbert Day. And, uh, and uh, the, the submission was within a second approved by every camera members uh, with, uh, with no dissension. So that, that shows that our government is all for it. Now, if you talk about the politicians uh, on the other side of the camp, I think there is, there is an issue because uh, they go around talking about the ill wills, ill, will, Ill feeling, uh, talking about the land issues, uh, that the Ethiopians are not with us and so forth. So, those things are a bit of worrying. Uh, whilst the government policies are very clear that we need the Girmitiers, the, the descendants, the children to continue farming with us, yes, we know there is a lease expiry issues, which, which is not an issue that has been there t today. That has been there ever since when the Fiji was uh, ceded to Britain, and thereafter when the Fiji was declared you know, independence. 
So there is the, the, the politicians need to come out with this responsibility to say, look, you know, what was the situation, what is the reality, and what is the problems and the solutions to all this. Whilst the farmers would li like to have a land to cultivate on, there is the, the, the uh, Ethiopians who also have some grievances that they also need some land. But generally, as I said, that uh, I, as, I, as I said last night, I was very disappointed uh, when uh, the opposition leader who actually accepted to come and sit with us in the Vijay Narayan's show, and then finally he said he will not, he will decline to come uh, with the reason that his party is not agreeing for him to come and sit and talk to us face to face about this Gurmit celebration whilst he had agreed initially that he will come. So that gives an indication that the opposition in this country is still very much through their either their Ethiopian members or the, the, the Indian members are trying to instill fear in the communities that this country is not safe or this is not sound and enough uh, giving that that we're supposed to give. While they, they, they talk too, too, too much in the open forums to say, oh, we are all together. But in the hearts of heart with the with the opposition leader in the SRA for not coming last night, gives me a very clear indication that they are not willing to give their true hearts to make a, this country a prosperous and united. At last year's celebrations, uh, none of the members from the opposition attended. Mm. Have you sent uh, invita invitations to them this time around and do you expect them to be at uh, Churchill Park? Uh, sorry, at Gurmit Sita. Uh, yes, we have sent to all the member of parliaments and uh, and uh, opposition supporters as well. But I'm 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 told that none will come, and I don't actually. If they don't don't come, it, it doesn't mean that we will uh, we'll lose anything, because it'll just give a clear indication that um, that they are not with us, and and of course they they that's their that, that's their. Uh, views and their decisions, they can stay home and enjoy uh, the public holiday. Mm. Mr. Singh, what final thoughts uh, going forward? Uh, what else can your ministry do? You've talked about the Grimit Centre project, but apart from that, what else can you do uh, in the country uh, so that uh, Grimit can be remembered in the way it should be? Uh, uh, as you know, uh, Anish, we have actually, last year our budget was very limited. We only had a million dollars, eh? multi ethnic. Uh, we had 50 million dollars for sugar industry. So this year, the Minister of Finance has uh, uh, promised me that there will be uh, more funding uh, for multi ethnic. Now, when that, uh, of course, there will be more funding for sugar and more funding for multi ethnic. And uh, if that uh, is all done by our ministers, uh, Ministry of Finance, uh, and I'm looking at about $10 million to be given to us in multi ethics So that gives me a lot of funding for me to look after the communities other than the Ethiopians. As you know, Ethiopians are taken care of by the Ministry of Fijian Affairs, Ethiopian Affairs. And I am held responsible to look after the Indian community and the other other communities like uh, Kewans, Banabans, Rotuans, and you name it, Solomons, and and they have got a lot of issues. Um, they have got housing problems. They have got land issues where they are setting what they in the squatter settlements uh, throughout Fiji. So if these fundings uh, come through to me, I'd love to see that I can help them out to move them out of those squatter settlements and give them proper housing places where they can you know, settle themselves properly. As you know now there is a settlement, if you pass Lemi, there is the Solomon Island settlement. You go to Wailuku, there's another settlement there. They are all, all staying in substandard uh, housing. Sir. And then there is, I've, been, I've been told that there is a family in Levuka, a, a, a community in Levuka. So if I have this funding, 
I will, uh, my uh, target would be to elevate them out from those type of housing into a better place so that they can enjoy their life like anybody else would do. But besides that, I'd also like to uh, promote that, uh, that, that uh, you know, this uh, Indian High Commission has got a uh, scholarship program of about 100 scholarships per year. Uh, and, and that has never been utilized uh, in, in, in its full capacity. So my ministry will, in, in, in conjunction with the um, Indian High Commission, would like to promote that scholarship and to use it the fullest. What they have said is, apart from uh, medicine, they can give scholarship for anything. Uh, and training for everything, whether you know it's it's uh, in-house training or three-year program, whatever. So my ministry from coming year will try to in uh, in hand in hand with the Indian High Commission use that, and with the five million that I just said in budget, uh, we'll try to allocate some funding for uh, um, our, our people that who have missed out in some form of uh, small small programs. Um, where we don't need uh, big funding, I'll see that we can assist them. And uh, then of course we also have an issue about uh, a lot of our people have these health issues, um, poverty, you know, uh, it is worst in a lot of places. You can see that uh, sometimes they cannot uh, reach to the right place uh, to get their, 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 their uh, assistance. Eh? So. With this funding that I'll have it in, in hand, I'll see that if we can penetrate and try to reach to our people at the fullest, uh, hopefully in the next budget. Mr. Singh, thank you very much for speaking with us and all the best for this weekend's celebration. Thank you very much, Anish, and uh, thank you very much, uh, times for having me around. And uh, I, I hope to be in your session more often. Thank you.